what is the pathophysiology? So there are four facets of uh, uh, acute kidney injury as far as pathophysiology is concerned. Okay, so one is fluid overload and also electrolyte disturbance. We know what sort of electrolyte disturbances that we might cause mostly in uh, acute kidney injury and uh, fluid overload because enough of fluid is not going out of the body. And there can be uremia because of accumulation of uh, uric acid or sorry, urea, blood urea. And there is disturbance in acid base, uh, acid bases because of uh, uh, protein catabolism and reduced. Uh, blood flow so these four facets you end up seeing all these uh, the clinical features related to all these four okay you see a drop in uh, ph in your blood gas uh, and uh, a drop in bicarb in your blood gas or in lab and then alkaline disturbances mostly hyperkalemia and and one of my nephrologist colleagues colleagues say that you can see any electrolyte disturbance. It's not just hyperkidemia in kidney failure. So you cannot just uh, call uh, hyperkalemia as uh, a, a feature or a presentation of um, um, acute kidney injury. There can be acute kidney injury with hypokalemia or normokalemia also. And uremia you see, and uh, there can be clinical symptoms for, like uremic encephalopathy, uremic uh, pericarditis, and or cirrhositis uh, um, as a feature of AKI. And fluid overload symptoms, you see uh, pulmonary edema, desaturation, tachypnea, tachycardia, everything. So all you see all sorts of uh, pathophysiological changes in acute kidney injury. And one more thing that we have to remember is that acute kidney injury is diagnosed or called labeled acute kidney injury for the first seven days. Okay, once it persists beyond seven days, the label changes as acute kidney disease, AKD. And um, if it persists for more than 90 days, from acute, you call it chronic. So the label changes, AKI and then AKD, and then CKD. And this is stage one, stage two, stage three, and uh, ongoing RRT, which is equal to stage three, and even AKD, again, divided into one, two, three. Only thing changes is the time frame. Uh, if the serum creatinine is not back to baseline after 90 days, you end up calling the patient CKD. And what are the long-term effects of AKI? It is associated with higher mortality and morbidity, number one, because it's not just the kidney function and also the, uh, the interventions that we do, like so the supportive interventions like uh, catheterization and then uh, renal replacement therapy. And we leave a lot of foreign material in the patient's body and they, they make the patient prone for and the infection and also the corresponding drop in the immunolog immunological capacity or uh, resistance to the diseases that would increase the mortality and morbidity. And we know the influence of uh, AKI on mechanical ventilation because you don't get the help from the kidney to keep the patient's, lung patient's lungs dry. You, it it ends up increasing the duration of mechanical ventilation and thus increase the length of uh, ICU stay and uh, hospital also. And multiple hospital readmissions within the next 90 days and the patient may end up in long-term care facility um, either for other comorbidities or just for renal replacement therapy.